Hello everyone and welcome. Today's tutorial is going to be on creating star trails. So, let's get in here and get started. Now first thing you probably going to do is download the software. You can do that by going to www.starstacks.net And it will redirect you to this uh, website here, this Marcus Enzweiler. D's a German website, uh, German name. Uh, forgive me if I really butchered that last name. <laughs> but uh, Marcus has some really good software here, and this one of these is StarStacks. And if you want to uh, get StarStacks, it's freeware for Mac, OS X, Windows, and Linux. And click here. And my high speed internet rip through here right quick. You can go over here and download it. Okay. I click in and download there. And here are for the Mac, uh, Windows, you know. This is the newest version here for uh, 0.70. It's a pretty good uh, update to the latest version. It was 0.60 I was using for a while. And uh, got a few uh, I in features added to it but download it from here and it's not too large a file about 60 you know megabyte it'll probably take you know, a few moments you know depending on your internet connection but okay let's get on and get in here now first thing I'm gonna cover over and I'll put these up on the screen is your camera settings now for a lot of the photos that I'm using in this tutorials you can even see a comment here on this one that went by or not comment uh shooting star but I used uh, some of these were at 14 some of 17 millimeter now we use 17 millimeter I use uh, at that focal range which is about 27.2 millimeter on a full frame I use 20 second exposure f 2.8 aperture and ISO of 1600 now depending on your lens uh, one of my lens I have I got a 10 to 22 you can set it on infinity and it's pretty much dead center. Although uh, my Sigma lens uh, infinity at wide open at 17 millimeter isn't accurate at the infinity mark. It's only accurate at 70 millimeters. So depending on what focal range you want to set this at, uh, you need to test your uh, focus during the daytime and set it. What I would uh, recommend doing is, uh, you know, focusing on a cloud and wherever it stops at when you get it set at 17 millimeter, mark it for pencil and that at night it will be pretty much accurate what you need to use it for now I'll, I'll post this on the screen also I'm going to demonstrate the 500 rule and I'll put the calculator here and basically what the 500 rule is is to pre pre prevent uh, uh, trails or egg shaped stars because earth spinning you want to you know, prevent that any way possible now what you do is say 500 and you divide it by your focal length now I'm just going to say 27 here, and it should come up by 18 and a half. Yeah, 18.51. Yeah, that's actually what I needed to go at to prevent any egg-shaped stars. Although I really can't go no if I drop any lower on 20 seconds or 15 seconds on my you know you know shutter speed on the camera. So 15 was too dark. I went ahead and went for 20 because really for star trails you're not going to notice but 500 rules you know something you need to know anyway okay another thing I want to mention is of course you're going to need an intervalometer or what I did was just shoot with the camera sit on 20 second exposure and use a uh, remote shutter and just lock it in and that way after 20 seconds it takes about a second or two then it takes another uh, picture so about every 22 uh, seconds or 23 seconds you're taking about a 20 second exposure and of course tripod that should be given okay now that we covered all that let's cop in here and actually get on to the actual creation process now if you uh, download and install star stacks I have it here on my Mac I'm gonna pull it up here pretty much really easy program to use and I really enjoy using it now the the button here or uh, orientation I'm not you know, particularly fond of there's a few settings I want to go over first though 
uh, you can use siding, uh, lighting, gap filling. Gap filling is a good one. Uh, comet mode sometimes works right, sometimes it doesn't. Depends on your number numbering system you used on your uh, you know your uh, pictures and stuff. I use a one, two, three on this one, and the way it imports it is, doesn't work too well. So I'm just going to use gap filling. You know, subtract the dark images. You know, I'm smooth. Uh, you, this right here is for your background here. It doesn't really change much. Uh, to turn off use compression, that's turned on by default. And the reason is, if I've, I've already exported these at 1080 by 1920. So therefore, I really don't want to use, you know, anything else, any, any larger or any smaller. Actually, I exported these a little bit smaller. But some of them are 1920. And, uh, depending on what you use, these are optional stuff. Now, if you can use a gap filling stuff, there's a few tools you can use. You know, a manual. But enough about that. I'm going to show you how to get in here. You can drag and drop images, although in the Mac version here, there's a bug. And the bug is it won't let you, you know, create your final image. So I'm just going to click on that. And what I've got is, uh, go over to my desktop. And I'm going to click on Tutorial Picks. Now this is the ones I'm going to use. And I'm going to select all of these at first. And my dark frame, I am going to remove that one. And open all of these. There, you, as I said, you know they're not in the correct order. Now, what a dark image, uh, dark frame is, is after you took, you know, quite a few pictures, you know, some sensors end up with you know spots and stuff, hot spots to call them. You can put your lens cap back on right after you get through taking the pictures, and take two or three pictures of uh, dark frame, and this will show the camera, hey, it'll show the program here, hey, this is you know not stars this is noise and stuff and this really helps clean your image up I've only got one for this tutorial but you can have as many as you want and probably the more you can put in there the better uh, image could look I'm not 100% sure on it I normally don't take no more than five even if I have like two or three hundred you know frames for this particular tutorial I'm only got 50 stars here I believe it is yeah about 50 now that we've done that this looks at this dark frames open the images start processing now I wish these were in reversed order I don't know why they did that but simple program click that it runs through your image and boom we're done alright now we can click on save as and I'm going to choose desktop and there is my default name I'm going to stay our stacks tutorial pick and click save and the JPEG was saved to the desktop and there you go folks it's, that's pretty simple now it's nice to have like trees and stuff in the background but unfortunately I live here on you know an island in the Philippines and the wind blows at night you know, if it, if it doesn't blow, then it's very humid outside and hot. So my trees look god awful in here, like they're shaking to death, blurred out. Not particularly happy with that, nothing I can do about it. But if you're doing this and you want to take a really, really good photo, this is just for tutorial purpose. I recommend using a building, uh, not a nice, you know, or uh, say like a statue or something in the background. That way you can get, you know, a nice architecture in there. And your stars, and plus the buildings are not going to shake. And if they do, they got an earthquake. So, <laughs> but that's pretty much it. That's uh, it. I'll show you a couple more uh, pictures here on the screen. And that's it, folks, for this tutorial. It's Star Stacks is that simple. And I hope everyone enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks, everyone. I hope you liked this video. If you did, hit the like button down below at the bottom. Also, don't forget to leave comments. I always look forward to everyone's comments on knowing what you like about the video and what I can do to improve them. But most importantly, if you like this type of video and enjoy this type of content, you know, hit the subscribe button. 
Subscribing is the best way to let me know that you like these videos and you want to see more. And when we get done, you know, hit the button to check out my website. If you want to learn more about X-Disc Photography, the blog website is the best place to go. Thanks everyone.